الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه ما بعد. One of the main mechanisms of purifying the heart is that of tawbah or repentance. Imam al-Nawawi, when he talks about tazkiyat al-qalb, he says the first pillar of tazkiyat al-qalb is that of tawbah, of repentance. And Ibn al-Qayyim, when he talks about this concept, he has a whole book, Madarij al-Salikin. The first thing he mentions is basically muhasaba. We talked about that yesterday. The second is the concept of tawbah. And every single scholar of the heart who talks about purification of the heart mentions the concept of tawbah in the top three things when it comes to purifying the heart. Now, brothers and sisters, the talk of tawbah is one that is universal. Every masjid, every khatib, every sheikh in the entire globe has given khutbas and lectures about tawbah. You have heard so many talks in this masjid about tawbah. Has it, had it ever occurred to you, have you ever asked yourself, why is this topic so common in the entire Muslim globe? Why is this topic, the talk of conversation, every third, fourth khatira is something about tawbah? I will tell you why. There is no other concept in the entire Quran in which the language that is used to incentivize repentance is as powerful and as majestic and as noble as that of Allah Azza wa Jal wanting us and ask, asking us to repent unto Him. How many are the verses that talk about Allah's forgiveness. In fact, the majority of Allah's names and attributes that are mentioned in the Quran and Sunnah, a large group of them center around forgiveness and compassion and mercy. There is no other motif that you will find more names and attributes than that of mercy and compassion and forgiveness. Al-Ghafoor, Al-Ghaffar, Ghafir, Tawab, and on and on. And the verses themselves, you've heard them so many times, I don't have time to go over all of them. قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَى أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Don't give up hope of Allah's mercy. Allah shall forgive all sins. Allah loves those that are repentant. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you this world and the next if you repent. The famous verse of Nuh alayhi salam. When he told his people, if you repent, Allah is going to send the rain. Allah is going to increase your crops. Allah is going to give you children. If you repent, you'll get this world and the next world. I don't need to go over all of that. But I want to point out, there is no other concept in the entire Quran in which the language is so incentivizing. It is so majestic than that of tawbah. And the reason for this, brothers and sisters, is obvious. In our religion, in our deen, this is the primary mechanism of rising up. You know, other religions, they have their versions of salvation. You have to believe in this and that. No, for us, it is very different. Salvation lies in our tawbah. Allah's pleasure lies in our tawbah. Al-Hasan al-Basri famously commented on that verse in Surah Al-Buruj. You know the, the famous Ashab al-Ukhdud story again. Time is always limited. There was an incident in Islamic history, pre-Islamic history, where a group of righteous people were viciously tortured. Ashab al-Ukhdud. You know Allah mentions in the Quran, a big pit was built. They were thrown into it. Vicious torture. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Im uh, immortalized this story in the Quran. Then Allah said, Hassan al-Basri commented, what an amazing verse. This group of people tortured Allah's awliya, executed righteous people, and Allah still gave them a way out and said, if they repent, they shall be forgiven. Those people who did the worst crime imaginable, mass murder of the righteous, they killed people simply for believing in Allah. Allah said to them, ثُمَّ لَمْ يَتُوبُوا If you don't repent, then you will be punished. And Hassan al-Basri said, even they, Allah gave them a way out. So then, how about the rest of us? SubhanAllah. Uh, again, Ibn Jawzi comments on this. You know the famous hadith, all of you know it, that your Lord is happier at one of your repentance, when you repent, than somebody who was lost in the desert and he found his camel. You know the famous story, right? Your Lord is happier than that person. Ibn al-Jawzi comments, Never in the Quran and Sunnah is this level of happiness given for any other deed than for the repenter when he repents. The number one mechanism to make Allah happy 
is when you come back to Allah. That's what tawbah means. Tawbah, to return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so brothers and sisters, again, we don't have time to go over all the evidences, but you've been there. You've heard these lectures, but I want you to think about why this topic is so common. And I want to conclude by mentioning two verses that I want us to ponder over. Two verses that talk about the sinner in a state that we should be pondering over. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the first verse, كَتَبَ رَبُّكُمْ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ الرَّحْمَةِ Your Lord has decreed upon himself that he shall be merciful. Your Lord has decreed rahmah. أَنَّهُ مَنْ عَمِلَ مِنْكُمْ سُوءًا بِجَهَالَةٍ Whoever does a sin in the state of jahala and then repents will find Allah forgiving. Whoever does a sin in the state of jahala and in the next verse also in the Quran, إِنَّمَا التَّوْبَةُ عَلَى اللَّهِ لِلَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ السُّوءَ بِجَهَالَةٍ Allah shall forgive anyone who repents who does the sin in jahala and then he turns to Allah, Allah will forgive him. My point here, what I want to finish off with, Allah describes the one doing the sin in the state of jahala. What does it mean jahala? Jahala does not mean that he didn't know it was a sin. Here, Jahala is not a condition, it is a description. Here, Jahala is not a condition. This verse does not mean whoever did a sin, not knowing it's a sin, shall be forgiven. If you did something you didn't know it was a sin, Allah is not going to punish you for it. What does Jahala here mean? As Ibn Abbas said, everybody who disobeys Allah is acting like a jahil. In other words, the way jahala should be translated, foolishness. You did something stupid. You knew it was dumb. You knew it was wrong. You shouldn't have done it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is using the adjective and it does pinch because it's true. Why did you do it? And Allah says, therefore, don't be a jahil. I'm giving you a way out. Don't act like a fool. Act wisely. What is the way to act wisely? ثُمَّ يَتُوبُونَ مِنْ قَرِيبٍ Do tawbah quickly. When you do tawbah, you are a wise person. This is my message to you today. It's not just tazkiyah of the qalb. It's not just rising your ranks up. No. When you sin, you are acting in a foolish manner. You know it's wrong. You know it's bad for you. You know punishment comes. Why are you doing it? Don't act foolishly. Act wisely. And when you act wisely, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love the fact that you have turned back to him. Final point, and we'll continue this tomorrow because this is a long top. Tawbah has many ways to do it or many conditions. Our scholars mentioned four of them. Memorize these four and they're very obvious. Number one, you feel regret and guilt. You should have genuine regret. I shouldn't have done that. Number two, your tongue should then ask Allah's forgiveness. Oh Allah, forgive me. Istighfar. Number three, you make a sincere desire. You're not gonna go back to that sin. And then number four, you make up. Like you did something wrong. You know when you have an argument, you do something. You need to make up for that argument, right? Well, to Allah belongs the perfect example. So memorize these four things. Number one, regret. Number two, istighfar. Number three, that you make a sincere desire, you're not going to go back. And number four, you make up. If you do all four of these, make up meanings, you, you do good deeds. If you do all four, you have perfected tawbah, tawbah and nasuha. But I want to finish off this point. If you don't do all four, you do two or three out of the four, this is still better than nothing. Don't give up. Even if you're not perfect. If you can't do all four, that's not perfect tawbah. And Allah wants you to do perfect tawbah. But a partial tawbah. Suppose you can't give up the sin, but you still feel guilty. You still make istighfar. And you make up by doing good deeds. Suppose that is the case. That person is still better than the one who doesn't feel guilty. The one who doesn't do istighfar. The one who's not making up with good deeds. So, the ideal perfect tawbah and this is the month of tawbah but if you can't attain perfect tawbah then imperfect tawbah is better than no tawbah so strive what you can do continue to raise the bar and inshallah we'll continue this topic tomorrow because this is a long topic wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh